Good CEOs play by the rules. Great CEOs reframe the game. This is the winning mindset where we profile CEOs who change the game. Trailblazers who charted their own path to success. The CEO in the spotlight today is known for being bold, innovative and battle-hardened. He runs a company that has over 300 factories in 41 countries across six continents. Not only is his company the largest amongst its domestic rivals, it's also a major global force. And the CEO at the driving seat is truly a man of many parts. We don't strategize. Strategy is for your customer. Let him strategize. For you, you have to know that your strategy will always interfere with the customer's strategy. That's why not having a strategy is a great strategy. Vivek Chan Segal had an idea for a startup in 1975. He wanted a piece of the silver trading business. His mother was his business partner. His father came up with an apt name for the venture mother son but in a few short years the company would move away from silver trading to making electrical wires for homes and then came the big pivot the year was 1983 and india was on the cusp of an automotive revolution Maruti Suzuki 800, the first affordable car assembled locally in India, had arrived and Mother Sun's automotive journey had begun. Mother Sun's wiring harnesses were among the few India-made parts in the car that were on proud display at the Maruti plant when it was inaugurated in 1986. Mother Sun established a joint venture with Sumitomo, one that continues to this date. In fact, the company went public in 1993 and since then, it's delivered a compounded annual growth rate of 32%. Its revenues have grown from less than 300 crore rupees a couple of decades ago to nearly 63,000 crores as things currently stand. From 65 crore rupees in 1997, Mother Sun now commands a market capitalization of nearly 50,000 crore rupees thanks largely to its aggressive global expansion. You know, uh, we have, ever since 1993, we've grown the top line by 35% a year. When we couldn't get the opportunities in India, we said, let's go out. From 2001 onwards, we went outside India and acquired a lot of companies and things like that. So the thing is that you come to a point where you say, it's now or never. You have to do it now. And now is always the best time to put the step forward and go for it. So uh, we did that. In 2008, we acquired a company, a mirror company. The whole world told us it's a, a Lehman crisis. People are not, uh, have, don't have so much of uh, faith in the future. Why are you acquiring a company which is going to double up your group? But we said, why not? This is the time. Things are going to become better in the future. You have to believe in that uh, adage because if there is no future, then why are you alive? You're almost dead. So many times, many the saying, we have to be bolder in the sense that we have to firmly believe that we are here to do something which is good for the betterment of the people, the country, the business, the whole group per se. It, we will have to think on those things. Vivek Chan Segal is a risk taker who believes in inorganic expansion. Since making its first acquisition in 2002, Mother Sun has acquired about two dozen companies so far. Many of these were considered risky and bold bets. Amidst the 2008 financial crisis, Mother Sun decided to acquire a British rare view mirror making company that was struggling to stay afloat. The losses from the Mirror Company wiped out all of Mother Sun's profits in just three months. The CEO of Vizio Cop wanted two years to turn the business around, but Segal was not ready to wait and he deputed his son to take charge of the turnaround plan. 
the problem came that who was going to be the CEO. My son had just come back from uh, US. He had uh, done his uh, uh, MBA or whatever. And I told him, Vaman, you're going to be the CEO of this company, and you're going to do it. And the pressure on all of us was that in Germany, under the law, if uh, the company was out of money and uh, the CEO didn't report it, uh, he could actually go to jail. So I told him, Vaman, you're my only son. I'm not going to let you go to jail, whatever. Uh, we had uh, a normal guy, whom, uh, a, a guy from the company whom, who was going to be the CEO. And he uh, told us it's going to take four years for us to uh, really uh, turn this company around. I told him, boss, see you next life. Vaman was made the CEO of that. And then how the group all supported uh, SMR, which was a, almost 1.2 times our group, uh, this thing, to then turn around. Month after month, every single uh, uh, company made sure that they could support this particular thing and make Warman uh, successful in his, uh, 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 in his foray. This company uh, has done now uh, tremendously well, as everybody knows. But it was the first company globally which does a rose of almost about 50%. So we didn't let go of our firm belief that rose is something which is more important than margin. Three years later, Vaman then resigned as the CEO of that, it came onto the family side. So the ability to actually lead from the front to be able to uh, prove to the people in different countries, in seven countries in a different world, in the very different world at that time, to actually show that we believe in this particular product, we believe in this technology. Everything boils down to trust. Trust is, is something which is much more important than what people uh, think, you know, degrees or this thing and all that. I think trust is, uh, is, is, is crucial. The ability to prove to our customers, we had a lot of uh, uh, reps and warranties and things like that, but nothing had to be used. We just made sure that we were delivering to the customer exactly what they were wanting. They have been in love with us ever since. I'm grateful. Segal believes in demarcating the professionals who work at Mother Sun from the family who own a majority stake. He wanted every staff member at Mother Sun to believe that they can one day become the managing director, a family-owned company run by professionals. I think it's very important for one uh, um, entrepreneur side, if you uh, will, if you're trying to distinguish between the entrepreneur side and to the management and the professional side. I think the first thing is cut the competition out. We see today many young people who are the CEOs of the company, but are also, in fact, the entrepreneurs. They hold shares and uh, major part of the company. I see them competing with the uh, professionals, and I feel there is a problem over there. So what Warman and me both believe, firmly believe, or I, uh, uh, is that there is no need for us to do the same job. We are going to look after the group on the uh, outer side, what growth potential, what, are, what is required. So, well, the manager is the owner of the company, but what about the professional? He thinks I can never become a managing director over here because the, the owner is already the managing director. So we separated very early in Mother Son the professionals from the uh, entrepreneurs, the family side. So if you're a family, you can only come into the family side, not onto the entrepreneur side, uh, not onto the professional side. So that particular clarity gave the smallest guy in our company, the ability that he can become the managing director of a big company because there is no competition with the owner. So I think that particular reassurance to the people created tremendous trust. Well, Segal also walked the talk in ensuring only professionals run the company, which is why he quit as the managing director just three years after Mother Son went public. I always ask a question to a lot of people. When do you think I resigned as the managing director of Mother Sumi? 
Uh, well, I resigned in 1996. Uh, that was just three years, or one year after the five-year plan was made, and three years after the uh, uh, listing of the company. Uh, that time, we were just about uh, 18 or 20 crores uh, on the top line. And it allowed me to actually then build up the company block by block, step by step, uh, over there. Uh, my people know that, that, uh, that I'm very serious about uh, this particular thing. And uh, uh, it's, it's a uh, thing that I think uh, stands out, that you have to believe in what you are saying. You have to show, not just for a show, but actually believe that this is the right thing to do. And time and again, we have proven it, that it is the right thing to do. Another area where Segal has walked the talk is returning profits to investors. Since 2002, the average dividend payout to investors is more than 33% of Mother Sun's profits. In fact, this is a key metric for the company to measure its success. But we think that you have to do it differently. You have to do it your way. And I think that particular thing is a simple common sense that we followed. And it helped us tremendously. Not only did we grow 35% year on year for the last 39 years, we've actually uh, returned to the shareholders 32% year on year every year. So your financial discipline, tremendous amount of focus on growth, that was taught to us by uh, Nimesh Shah uh, from Inam. He told us, focus on growth, don't focus on margins. And we still follow that blindly. We don't care about the margin has gone up 2%, down 2%. The main thing is return on capital employed. That is something which was a great learning for a group like ours. Apart from return on capital employed, there is another metric Segal uses to quantify success. It's called doing a 33. There are so many things which we have uh, uh, followed because we think we, we are uh, 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 telling the people in our company that this is the way to go. So something like C to A to C, which is cut costs at all costs. So it's double C, double A, C. The, so many mantras that uh, the group uh, keeps following on, on that. Uh, we have a thing which is called do 33. We don't want improvements of 2%, 3%, or 5%. We say, I want 33% improvement every month. Any guy will tell you that that's not possible. But if you think about it differently, then you say it is possible. We have, at that time when we uh, uh, came into this, we had 33 plants for wiring harnesses. So we uh, said if we can hot, horizontally dis, uh, 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 put the uh, benefits into all 33 plants simultaneously at the same time, we would actually get 33 times the, uh, the improvement. And that started the Do 33, uh, which is so famous in Mother Sun. Every month, every plant actually gives us what is their Do 33, this thing, what are they are doing, how much space they have saved, how the workers and the associates have been trained, how, the, how their success planning is going to happen. So all those things would happen only because you took the first step to say Do 33 means we want a big quantum jump, quantum leap uh, in, in our plants. So I think all these particular things add up and then they accumulate. And when you look back in history, you say that was the right thing to do. But you know, anybody else would have said a 3% improvement year on year was, was fantastic. We said, no, we want 33% every month. <laughs> Well, apart from doing a 33, Segal has enabled a culture at Mother Sun where every rupee deployed as capital is scrutinized, but with the pace to ensure speedier approvals and Mother Sun's low attrition rate is a case study for others to emulate. All of this and more when we return from this short break. Welcome back to The Winning Mindset. And today we're bringing you the story of Vivek Chan Segal and the rise of the Mother Sun Group, which has more than 300 factories across 41 countries. While Mother Sun has been aggressive with expansion and inorganic growth, it scrutinizes 
every single rupee that gets deployed. Segal believes this scrutiny enables greater accountability and even faster approvals. A group like ours, almost about 11 billion or whatever we are today, we uh, need a CAPEX approval for 25,000 rupees more has to be done by me itself in the last uh, this thing. But it has to go through a process of uh, people. This particular thing is now uh, done by our own app, which the people who want to buy a particular uh, uh, CAPEX uh, will file that thing. And how quickly that approval comes to them seamlessly without paper is uh, something which we pride ourselves on. A lot of companies across the world used to say it's not possible for us to get approvals for even small amounts of 500 euros or something. But we said, no, try it first and then tell. They actually saw that the approvals came faster. Every single thing was very seamless. We also knew because wherever the capex is stalled at a particular point, we knew exactly the time difference and the uh, amount of time the person is taking to give the approval. So everything comes in together when people realize that there is accountability. And accountability along with the freedom to do what they think is right, what uh, machines they have to buy. So even if it's a 100 crore project, the approvals will come through the CAPEX, will, uh, through an app. So it's, it, it ties in this thing. You have capable people, they understand what they're doing, and then they do it. They, they make the magic happen. Madhusan has also been a case study for companies across many sectors for its low attrition rate. In fact, Dilip Sangvi of Sun Pharma once said his company and the industry can learn a lot from Madhusan on how to treat employees and take the right decisions regarding talent. Um, for me, I think... Uh, the key thing is uh, the team. Uh, team is 99.99% of what your company is. Uh, the people believe in you, you believe in the people. Uh, you have almost a, a, a guaranteed success in front of you. But uh, challenges are going to come every minute, every hour, every day it is going to come. But the ability of the team to get together, respond to these particular things, actually is the running of the company. We believe that uh, this is not found in a, any specific college or this thing like that. It's how you deal with the people and how the people deal with you. That is the essence of the uh, relationship. Uh, we have a nutrition rate of less than 0.03% or something like that, which is ridiculous. But we have never hired a person who's left us. We've never hired him. He's family, always. He will be for the rest of his life. But we will not rehire him. We believe that if a person has once lost trust in the company, then he's gone. We will not rehire him. He might be the last man standing. So things like that, people actually see you. Are, are you actually going to believe in that? The last thing you want is that uh, the person who is working under you is going to come back two years or three years later as your boss. Uh, that's very scary for a lot of people. And they start believing in our this thing that, yes, once you let a person go or he has desired to go, we ask him to go immediately. We don't uh, tell him, please wait for three months or something like that but we never rehire him. So uh, we are Hindus, so we say, see your next life then. <laughs> Segal charts out five-year plans for Mother Son with stiff targets. The first five-year plan announced way back in 1995 was about hitting $30 million in sales. By year 2000, Mother Son sales topped $35 million and the company managed to hit the five-year targets since then. Now, sales cross $1.5 billion by 2010, more than $5 billion by 2015, and nearly $9 billion by 2020. Segal now has a target of achieving $36 billion in sales by 2025. So, very clear, we have always believed in five-year horizons. We believe uh, that um, uh, because of the simple fact the model life a car maker or bike maker or truck maker comes out with is normally five years. 
I think the world is very unpredictable and you must have some kind of uh, grasp on what the future is going to be. I, I find it really funny when people tell me in 2030, you know, all cars will be this or 2040, this is going to be the future. I'm saying, wow, these guys must be having a big bowl which they look into to tell you what the future is. We believe that five-year period actually tells us in the automotive industry what the trends are because a, a model which is made by the customer normally is three and a half years, five years is the kind of range in which that thing is. And I see that holds to uh, reason. It uh, is something which has firmly helped our group uh, focus on the present and uh, ability to know a little bit in the future how, what, what trends we have to go to. 95, 90, 2000 was the first five-year plan that we, uh, we came out. We wanted to become a 100 crore company from the humble beginnings that I told you about. We actually achieved 82 crores. A lot of people uh, got a sense of comfort that we were close to our target. The next target that we went was from 100 crores, we wanted to go to 1,000 crores in five years. That was the time when Y2K and 9-11 and all these things happened. A lot of people actually were surprised when we hit 1,010 crores at, at, at the end of uh, 2005. So when you make a five-year plan and you put it into your annual report, you are actually telling your uh, 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 employees, you're telling your investors, you're telling everybody what you want to do, what are the key things that you're going to focus on, and that five-year plan actually is the basis of Malsan. To 2025, our target is clear, 36 billion on the top line, 40% rose. Segel does not believe in management quotes or books, but he does believe in thinking out of the box. You know, a lot of people send me management books and things like that. And I just um, I put it over here, just behind, just stacked up over there. Then after two months or three months, he rings me up and he says, Padi. I say, ha, Padi. It means it's there. I, I don't read it. I think you have to do it from your heart. You have to be ability, you have to have the ability to use your mind, heart, and your soul. If these three combinations come in together, then whatever steps you will take, will take it uh, this thing. Don't be a professional trying to be an entrepreneur. Be, a, be an entrepreneur from the feeling that you have to build the company as your baby and you don't have to sell your babies. Mother Son has never sold a company. We are buyers for sure. We buy companies, whatever, whatever the company, uh, uh, the customer wants us to buy. We don't wake up in the morning that I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy this. We don't strategize. Strategy is for your customer. Let him strategize. For you, you have to know that your strategy will always interfere with the customer's strategy. That's why not having a strategy is a great strategy. Well, the quintessential entrepreneur, that is the story of Mother Son Group and Vivek Chan Segal. And that brings the curtains down on the third episode of The Winning Mindset, the CEO Guidebook. We will see you again next time with the story of another trailblazer from the world of business. For now, from the team, thanks for watching. <laughs>